Hello and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lærke and this is a podcast all about knitting, about knitwear design and about anything else I feel like sharing. Um, I'm coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark and I live here in the neck of the woods with my husband or partner, we're not married, <laughs> and our two small children. And first of all, I want to say Merry Christmas to you all. I hope Christmas has been great and that you managed to spend it with those you love. I know, at least here, it's been very uncertain and there's been a lot of uh, uh, different talks about not celebrating with your family because of uh, the whole pandemic being really bad at the moment. Luckily, I live in a quite isolated area in the middle of the countryside. I haven't been seeing a lot of people and I feel quite safe um, to visit my parents and my family. But it, there's always that little thought that you hope you don't bring something into the family. Um, it's been quite a year. Um, today is the 29th of December, so we're just at the end of the year and I'm starting to plan for the next year been looking back a bit on 2020. I will talk more about my plans and dreams for 2021 at the end of the episode. But first I want to talk about some knitting. Um, I also want to just talk a little bit about what we've been up to because it's been, uh, I think the last podcast episode I did was back in November and a lot of things has happened since then. Um, it's been really hard. I, I still struggle a little bit with everything going on and running my business. I talked about that last time as well. Uh, struggling in the sense that I'm running two businesses um, and yeah, just finding the right balance has been a little bit hard for me. Um, and there's been a few, some setbacks. Uh, I will also talk about those later on. Not in a very negative way, but just things that made me stop a little bit or get a little bit sidetracked. Um, and I don't know, I think it's just everything has been a little bit difficult. Like the weather has been extremely gloomy. Today we had the first snow and even if it's already melted and it's already gone, it was so good to have just a little bit of something bright. Uh, December has been extremely dark, almost no sunshine. And it's not because I live so much up north. I mean, days are short, but it's been exceptionally dark um, this December. I think up until Christmas we had only one hour of sun, of sunshine during the whole month, which was crazy. Um, yeah, so December has been very gloomy and it didn't help on my mood. Um, so yeah, but I've been knitting quite a lot. It's not, I actually feel like knitting a lot. It's just some parts, some aspects have been giving me a bit of trouble. Anyways, I will get into all of that. First, I want to talk about something a little more fun that is knitting. Oh, and the other thing that happened before knitting is we were without heating for a week. Um, and it has happened before. We have a pump system, like air, air pump. <sighs> I don't know how to explain that. And it has been giving us a lot of trouble and we have been back and forth with the yeah, the owner of the house because this is the this is a rented house and there's just a lot of issues and it all every time that happens I think about should we consider finding another house but I don't feel like moving at the moment and just a lot of things happening behind the scenes so it's been on one hand I have a lot of things that I'm super excited about and on the other hand it's there's been some things to make the mood a little more mm, yeah just more like the weather. <laughs> I hope you have been feeling a little more, uh, a little better and not so hmm, gloomy as I have. Um, but that happens and I'm, I'm, I'm never too nervous when I have these periods of feeling uh, not so um, energized. It's normally just like a transition period or I'm I'm very influenced by the weather. I I feel like nature influences me a lot and that's always why I feel this bittersweet feeling when we get into fall. I love fall. I think it's beautiful, but then comes the winter. And since 
the last years has been very mild here in the winter. We haven't had any snow last year and this year looks like it's probably going to be a bit of the same. So it just feels very sad because I miss that season that I remember as a child having more cold winters with snow and going ice skating and those things just haven't happened in a while. So, but maybe, maybe it will happen this year. I really hope so. Uh, yeah, so onto some knitting. I have some Christmas knitting that if you've been following this channel for a while, you, uh, let me see if I can grab the other one. You've probably seen that I got a, 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 sock set, um, a set of yarn, like a skein and a mini skein to do a pair of socks. I got them last year. They arrived just after Christmas, so I cast them on. But then of course there were Christmas socks, so I didn't really feel much like knitting on them. And I showed you like the little, the top of the, uh, like the cuff that I began working on. And this is yarn by, let me see if I can show you the ball. This is what I am always done with the second sock, so I don't have much left. But this is beautiful yarn by Woolen Vine by Jule, who was here in the summer, if you watched that episode. Um, she's from Hamburg and she came in the summer. Jule uh, naturally dyed this yarn. It's a beautiful rustic yarn and it has little green specks and red specks. And it's actually something I've been searching for for a long time. Sorry, I'm going to cough if I don't... Oh. Excuse me. Okay, I had something in my throat. Um, I've been searching for yarn that had the specks but was actually naturally dyed. And this is also a sock yarn without any nylon or anything. If I remember correctly, I don't have the ball band, but knowing Yule, I am pretty confident. I can tell you it's all natural, very rustic, very nice yarn. It's a bit thicker, so I've been knitting it on three millimeter needles. Anyways, let me show you the sock because I didn't finish the first sock until December this year. <laughs> and here it is. Let me put down the thread. So, this is the first sock and as you can see it has a lot, it reminds me of like a crushed uh, candy cane or something and then with these green specks and it had a contrasting heel color that's a little more dark red than the red used in the specks I think but I think it fits perfectly anyways. Um, so this is the first sock, I just did a very simple sock and I did a garter heel because I thought that would look very cozy. I knit on three millimeter needles, I think I said that, and I knit the socks on the small circular needles. I actually can show you here because I have them sitting on the toe of the second sock. So I'm working on the second sock. Uh, it actually knits up really quickly as it's on three millimeter needles, but I just it took me forever to get to work the second one. So here we are, I actually can see there's quite a lot more speckles on the first sock than on the second sock, but I kind of like that. I don't mind that they're not the same. Um, this one is a little more speckled than the other one. Um, and yeah, I just picked them up again and now again we're after Christmas and I haven't finished them, but I am going to finish this toe today and or this evening and then I will have a pair of nice and cozy house socks or socks for big boots because they are quite thick uh, and they are so rustic and so wonderful and I made them so they will fit me with a pair of socks underneath because I really like wearing my like thicker socks and in the winter I like having an, an extra pair of socks. I cast on 52 stitches. Um, I actually started over so many times because I was just not sure how many stitches I needed for uh, the cuff when using three millimeters. So I have 52 on the cuff and all the way down to the heel and then I actually um, ended up with 50 stitches on the foot. So I find that my calves are a little bit bigger and I like to have just a little bit tighter on the foot so it doesn't slide around so much. And I like the cuff to be a little more scrunched up. I'm really happy with these and I'm really happy with the yarn and I think I will make some mini socks uh, to go on the Christmas tree from the leftover as I won't have much left and I have also a little bit of the red. I was thinking to do also red toes but there was not so much, I'm not going to look for it, but there wasn't so much left so I finally ended up just saying okay, 
I'm gonna do the whole thing in the white except for the heels and then that's that. So I've been working on those and they're almost finished. Mm. Then I have been working on something that's behind me. I don't know if you can see a little bit. That is uh, the yarn I got. If you follow me on Instagram, you should because I'm much more active. Even when I don't have, uh, I don't post much, which I haven't been doing lately. I am almost always active in the stories and just one thing, if you find that I don't show up in your stories or in your feed, it's because of the Instagram algorithm uh, that's always changing and always giving um, a bit of trouble. But the thing is, you have to go and give a few of my comment of my pictures a like and a comment and then Instagram knows that you like what I do and then they will keep showing me, showing you what I'm posting um, and the same with the stories just sometimes throw a little reaction to one of my stories and that way you will be sure that you will see my stories um, if you want to follow along uh, but I know that is a bit of an issue sometimes I'm like I haven't seen anything from this person in a while and then I go check their profile and it just turns out that Instagram apparently decided I was not interested in following this person anymore I mean I still follow them but they won't show up in my feed so the more you interact with people, the more you will see their posts, at least that's how I think it works at the moment, but I'm no expert. I just, yeah, that seems to help. So in case you want to follow a little bit more along, that's a little tip. Um, yes, what, I, what was I saying? Yes, I went to, the, um, to a yarn store uh, and that's what I was talking about, Instagram. I went to a yarn store that is uh, local to me, so maybe 10 minutes away from where I live. Um, and uh, with with by uh, with the car and it is a very nice little yarn shop it's also a web shop um that's called Ul universal which means wool universe um and it is um two ladies that are very very nice ladies that uh have fallen in love completely with the british or yarn from the United Kingdom and they are selling only exclusively ex exclusively yarn from um, yeah from there and I came home with some John Arbon so that is the let's see if I can grab a ball to show you yeah here's a ball so here's for example one of the balls this is knit by numbers which is one of the uh, very popular yarns and knit by numbers is actually a little bit different for me because it's um, a worsted spun yarn so it's a bit more smooth and very soft if you are afraid that uh, if you find yarn prickly this is very soft and uh, I got four colorways that this one the lighter one and their colorways are very nice because they are mixed so they go they have the same shade or the same color, but in different, from light to dark. Um, let's see if I can grab one of the other ones. I don't want to show you the complete design. So this is the contrasting color that I got, which is a very nice ochre-y, um, yeah, dark yellow mustard color. And then, let's see, let's see what I get. I always have all kind of stuff in my knitting basket. So here we go. This is, for example, the darkest color or dark one of the darker colors of this or shades of this color. Now I'm getting confused if I'm saying it right. But and I have one in between. That's actually the one you can see the main color of here. Um, yeah. So I picked up some yarn there uh, and talked to the ladies and just had a very wonderful time. I, it's so nice to see a lot of the different yarns they have on display because normally I can see it online but it's just different seeing it in real life and uh, I picked up something for a design and because I had some troubles with some of my other designs I decided to treat myself and to begin uh, working on something fun so it's behind me I'm not gonna show you anymore because I want to keep it a secret a little bit longer uh, also just to be sure I keep ripping back and changing things and yeah I just want to keep it a secret a little bit longer but I will show you when we are a little closer to when I'm closer to being finished and it is a shawl that I'm working on so that's like my little fun project 
And the Knit by Numbers is very soft. It's a DK weight and it's very soft. The only maybe minus when you have like a worsted spun softer yarn is that it is um, it peels a little bit more. So you will find maybe experience some peeling with this kind of yarn. Um, so also when you're working with it, let's see if I can make it focus on the yarn. Yeah, it, it's very smooth and it just starts fussing a little bit. Um, so that's always the thing, the softer the yarn, at least often, the softer the yarn, the more it will peel. But for a worsted spun yarn, it's really nice, still and lofty, not very heavy and dense, and it works really well with color work. So can't wait to show you that. I've been working on that. I also worked on my the white sweater that I showed you last time. Oh, I'm out of focus. There we are. <laughs> the last sweater that I showed you last time, the white fluffy textured one. I'm not going to show now because not so much has happened, but it's pretty much done. And I just have to write the pattern uh, and get it started. Um, that one, yeah, you can watch the last episode if you want to see what I'm talking about, as I didn't bring it down from upstairs. Um, what else? I'm just looking at my notes. Ah yes, so after I went there and I posted about the yarn and I had fun with it, I actually was contacted by the nice, kind people at um, John Abron and they asked me if I wanted to have like a sample pack just to see um, maybe if I want to work with some of their yarns in the future. So they sent me a little package and this they sent me for free. Um, and in this package there was... Um, a whole, and this is like the best thing if you ask me what I really want to have. Sorry, I thought I heard a sound. Ooh, I'm home alone. I sent my partner out and the kids just for a little bit. Let me just brighten the screen. This is getting darker. I hope we won't run out of light. And um, yeah, they sent me a lot of, of uh, sample cards with all the colors. And all the different, yeah, it, this is just like the best thing for designer because that way I can, whenever I have an idea and I'm not sure about the colors, I have them next to me and it's so hard to pick colors for me when I'm doing it online. So I'm really excited about this and they also sent me, let me just get them out. Ah, these are just the cutest. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you without all the labels covering everything. So they sent me a whole bunch of mini skeins in all the different um, bases. So just so I have a little more to see how I like the bases. So this one, for example, is their uh, Harvest Hues, Four Plies, which are beautiful colors. This one I really wanted to try out for some time. It's the Harvest Hues in Worsted. And this color is absolutely stunning love this color and here we have the oh this is the yarnadelic which is a sport heavy four ply and it's also very nice i don't there's no more info on these so i will have to go and check them online this is the exmoor sock four ply which seems like a very beautiful sock yarn uh, very rustic and with some long stables so i guess the exmoor has some longer uh, more coarse hair this is the Devonia 4-ply, which is also very nice. Oh, the birds are flying around outside my window. And this is the Knit by Numbers DK that I'm using. Oh, this is the 4-ply. Well, I guess mine is the 4-ply or the DK. And this one is Alpaca Supreme. It's a heavy 4-ply and has a lot of shine and luster. That's a typical alpaca, a lot of drape. You can see like this one. Is falling whereas if I take the, um, well, the harvest hue seems to have some drape as well but if I take the sock yarn it's pretty much standing up <laughs> standing up by itself yeah they have a little bit of a different it's also of course depends how hard you um, you twist them in the skein the Devonia is really like stiff so all these little babies it's so much fun to receive these kind of packages is absolutely lovely oh I see the light is really disappearing as we're speaking um, yeah so I have a lot to play around with and maybe I find that's the easiest way for me because it sometimes takes me some time to have ideas and when I have find it easier to get ideas with the stuff I have in my house so 
I would probably figure out something with those at some point. I have um, finished two gift knits while the Christmas was... Sorry, I'm touching my hair all the time, but I feel like it's falling into my face. <laughs> oh, I also finished um, this headband, talking about hair and headbands. I normally never wear a headband on top of my hair, but let's give it a try. So I finished this headband that I talked about last time. This is my... It's also because my forehead is kind of big, so it <laughs> they have to go somewhere. Uh, this is the Yedra um, uh, headband that I talked about. I made a pair of mitts and the headband, and this is knit in my own yarn that I had. Um, that I have I have spun. I had spun last time from uh, my parents' sheep. So this is uh, organic worsted weight yarn and. This is a really fast thing to knit up um, and I love wearing headbands. I wear them a lot when I bike and they keep air from getting into my ears. Whereas I find hats, they kind of slide up and air still gets into my ears and these really cover my ears nicely. I'm not so cold on my head, I find. I'm more cold on in when the air goes into my ears when I'm biking. I don't like that. So this one goes with my mitts and really nice and thank you to everyone who has um, purchased the patterns because it's been so nice I've gotten so much support during November and December and it just really makes me very happy that I get to do this for a living so um, I finished those and then I made two gift knit gift knits and the first one is well actually I, I made this one first so let's start with the one I finished first and this is a balaclava. We call these elephant elephant hats in Danish. I don't know why, but we call them like that. And this one I made for my girl, and it is a pattern from um, Knitting for Olive, and it's called Baby Bear Balaclava, or in Danish it's called Lillebjørn Elephant Who. And it is a little bit too big for her. Um, I made the biggest size, so it was four five years or something to eight or nine I can't remember and actually fits me so here goes ah! I should just keep it for myself because it fits me really well um, it's a little bit too tight in the neck and with all my hair it looks funny but it's so nice I made this in some uh, sock yarn that I had uh, let me take it off again I made this in um, and a little bit of a heavy sock yarn that has rami uh, I got from a Danish shop called Naturally Big Learning, I think. Uh, it just didn't have a brand or anything on it, so I don't know much about it, but um, it's a very nice war off white, gray, warm, whitish color. And I added some um, silk mohair, uh, and it's very nice. It's a bit of a had a bit of trouble with the pattern and it, I cannot figure out if it's just me who was a little bit lazy uh, reading the pattern and just kind of, oh, I know what I'm doing and then maybe not reading everything super carefully um, because I forgot to put in all the markers that they explain where to put. So it's probably me and I'm not gonna blame the pattern, but I didn't find it so easy to follow. It's a bit of a funny construction. Um, I think it's it's a little bit too big for her, but it might be that my gauge is off and I didn't didn't feel like. When I'm doing other people's patterns, I'm terrible because I don't feel like doing the whole... I mean, of course, for a sweater or something, I will, but for something small, I'm a little bit lazy as I'm working with patterns and gauge and everything always uh, as a knitwear designer. Then sometimes I just want to do something quick. Um, so it's a bit too big and that might be my gauge. Also, the sock yarn is a bit of a thicker sock yarn, so almost more like a sport weight probably, and that might have something to do with it turning out a bit bigger. Uh, I will say I'm not so impressed by this construction as it ends up being a little bit of a weird square on the back of the head. Um, I would probably have done something a little bit different. And I really like, they, they have really clever designs, knitting for olives, so this is just a small uh, thing that I noticed and probably could have. I mean, once you have it on a head and it's a bit tighter, it sits really well, but as it's a bit too big on my on my girl, it's just poking out a bit on the back and looking a bit funny. <laughs> Sorry, I heard something squeaking. Maybe it's just, yeah. Um, but she will fit into it maybe next year. She complained a little bit. It was 
scratchy of course because she's five years old and it's not really in the mood. No, it's a little bird chipping outside the window. Yeah, I see it. Uh, she complained a bit that it was uh, scratching her neck, of course. But I made another one and this one fits perfectly. So this one I actually measured my boy. <laughs> uh, this is for the smallest one and this is a nice foxy orangey color, uh, warm burnt orange. Um, and I used a tweed sock yarn that I got. Uh, it's a hand dyed one that was sent to me by a sweet viewer who is Danish. And we, in one of my episodes where I talked all about my love for tweed yarn, she said she had some leftover yarn. This is dyed by a woman on an island called Bonholm. And I can't remember the name and I don't have the label. I know it's super bad, but sometimes if I have time for, for recording, I just have to go with it. Um, I made the ears just a little more pointy uh, in the pattern it tells you to kind of unpoint them to get more of a bare shape and I left them pointy so it's more like a little fox helmet and on this one I did the second um, so it comes in two versions like a little uh, like a straight neck oh, and this one that goes a little down on the shoulders uh, so I made it a little bit longer and the pattern also tells you to just double your sock yarn instead of using mohair around the face so it doesn't um, end up, they don't end up eating the mohair which can be not so good for the children and so you can see it still has this weird little triangular shaping I mean, I, am, I wouldn't be able to, to come up with this pattern because me and 3D shaping things I find really hard <laughs> Um, so I'm still really impressed how they made it. There's a lot of short rows shaping going on and yeah, the ears, ear shaping and neck back of the head shaping and more short row shaping and so on. And also the neck down here is made with uh, a lot of short row shaping. So, uh, I think if you don't put your markers in, you're going to be confused like I was. Um, but they turned out fine, both of them. And I really like them and he will wear this one now that it's really cold. Um, and I added the mohair I added is from Filcolana, I think. It's the Tilia. Yeah, it's Tilia. And I added, uh, can't remember the colors. If you really want to know, you can ask me, but it's the one that looks very much like this. And the other one was more like a weedy, um, like oatmeal kind of, that's what I want to say, oatmeal kind of colorway. And actually on this one, I ran out of the main color and I just added in some pink yarn at the bottom and did a tub tubular bind off just for a little nicer and stretchy um, edge and it looks fine so it's a good thing about this one if you run out of yarn it will be at the end of the neck so you don't have to worry too much so those I'm really happy with those two even if the big one might not get as much wear as I hope it hoped it would but then I can steal it and <laughs> wear it myself um, Okay, uh, I think that's it for knitting. I didn't make any other gifts because, let's be honest, um, I am busy working on designs most of the time and I don't have much time for knitting. So I just was a bit more realistic than I've been other years and I didn't, yeah, I didn't feel like making a lot of gift knits. Also, my nephews and niece are bigger now, so they're not that much into baby knits and stuff. So. It's kind of, um, yeah, I think the time is has passed that I am knitting for my nieces and nephews as I used to. It was actually some of the, back when I wasn't really a, a knitter all the time, I used to just make gift knits, gift knits and that's when I would always start knitting again, is when Christmas came around or birthdays came around and I would try to, sorry about the hair, <laughs> I would try to uh, figure out what to make them and sometimes with more success than others okay let's talk a little bit about um, the designs that are coming or not coming uh, at least not now they're a little bit uh, delayed um, and that's what i talked about at the beginning some things have not been going as smooth as i would have wished to uh, and i think i'm definitely blaming mainly myself for this um, I'm not blaming my test knitters, so please don't take this the wrong way if I'm talking about issues that come up with testing. 
that happens and that's just to be honest also if someone else is watching and thinking about doing knitwear design or working in knitwear design I think it's nice to be able to talk about these things but I'm not blaming my testers because without my testers I wouldn't be able to make any of these designs happen that I have have released so I'm always super grateful to my testers it's something that they do for free or they get a free pattern but that's still pretty much for free they do it because they love to help and love to try out new patterns and everyone has their own reason but um, I had a pattern that I have been working on that is a cardigan pattern with a little bit of a special construction um, I have shown it in recent uh, of the previous episodes and what ha it has been in testing for the last months and unfortunately not all of my testers managed to finish and actually uh, quite a few testers didn't manage to finish and I also got some feedback that was not completely perfect I think um, which then maybe I could figure I can figure that out but since not all testers finished for example um, the two extra large size both of my testers had to drop out and normally I have more than one tester exactly for this reason but then it can happen that both have to stop working on the um, on the pattern and it never happened to me before in this way that so many testers didn't finish or different things happened that made it not possible um, and I also think I was not so involved I've been very busy as you know or maybe you don't know if you knew uh, but I've been very busy getting my uh, other the other side of my business up and running which is uh, photography and um, so maybe I haven't been as focused as I normally am with a pattern uh, so I think I can learn from this and know that I have to be more involved with the testing part um, but yeah it didn't didn't happen so the the pattern is not ready and I was hoping to have it out in December but since yeah I could just feel like things were not coming together as they normally do uh, feedback was not exactly as I wanted it um, I just lost all the steam on it and uh, it's so stupid because I probably should just have found some new testers and set it up and have them running like really fast and or have it going again and I could have it out when in January or February but because I got really like discouraged from this happening and <laughs> I don't know it just ah, I lost all the will to work on this and it's so stupid because the pattern is there most of my testers finished and made beautiful cardigans um, so I don't know I I really have to sit down and have a good look at it and see if some things need to be changed run another test um, I guess the thing is I'm used to after all the work then I have the I can release the pattern and have the the fun or the, the like it's a boost right it's a boost when I release a pattern I feel really good I get feedback uh, and I, I feel really happy and it's like oh so you thought you were gonna have your cake no you're not gonna have your cake I'm gonna take it from you and and yeah you just have to keep working I don't know it's really silly and when I talk about it I know that I know what to do and I know what I should do to get it well I just threw a hair elastic <laughs> I know what to do to get it to have it finished and I guess it's just you know like when you have a big paper in the, at the university or when you have something you have to do it just I just lost steam so I have that sweater or that cardigan that is almost done and I just need to finish those sizes like to figure out if I should change some things and have it tested again and I don't know why that is so hard for me I think I should just put it as the first thing I do in January and not do anything else just to have it done uh, and then I actually have two more sweaters so I have that white textured sweater that I showed you in the last episode um, that one is finished but since I was thinking I need to finish the other one first before I write the pattern for this one again that one is just like there and not nothing happening so I really need to maybe I should just get that one finished and yeah it's as you can see there are a lot of it's like my head is cluttered and I just some this is the moment when I really I'm sorry if this is really boring but um, 
it's so nice to talk to somebody about it uh, sometimes yeah this is the moment when i feel like i really miss having a partner in doing this i love having the business on my own but it would be so great if i had a partner that i could just sit down and or somebody who could like okay now we're gonna do this and i'm not the one trying to figure out what's gonna happen all the time and holding my own ears do we do you say that in english and danish you say you hold your ears like to keep yourself um on track anyways so that's i have those two sweaters and the cardigan and the sweater and then i actually have another sweater that i was working on that's also finished um well it has one sleeve finished and the other one is missing and I also just need to write that do that one down and have it done and out. As you can see, it, things are kind of stopping at the writing the patterns and get things done. And not so much as at the knitting at the moment. I love knitting and I have many ideas, but I'm just feeling terrible about getting things done. So I don't know. Yeah, this is a very honest episode, I guess, today that I'm not on top of things as I would like to be. So um, I wanted to finish this off, this episode off by talking a little bit about um, what my dreams are. Let's just brighten this one up just a little bit more. What my dreams are for the new year, because I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of things I want to do, both with my um, knitwear design business and also with my photography but let's not talk about the photography and maybe I will mention it but um, with knitwear I am thinking as this has been happening for a little while now a few months that I have this uh, writing the pattern has been really tough for me uh, I'm not the best person per person person <laughs> when it comes to oh sorry I'm kicking the camera when it comes to math um, so it's uh, and I said that before, and the thing is, I'm really proud. I figured out how to grade patterns and do everything. I can do it. I can really do it. It's not a problem, but it's one of those things that kind of I keep pushing. And then, okay, I sit down one day or two days or how many days it takes me to kind of do it. And I do it, but I know you can do it more efficiently if you use Excel properly. I know you can, there are many things you can do to speed up the process. And since my brain with math is a little bit... I do it the way that makes sense to me. I'm not really efficient. And also I am, uh, I'm finding that, yeah, I'm just, it's, I'm not having fun doing it. That's also why I'm not sitting down and figuring out how to do it better. It's not something that I really enjoy. I kind of enjoy doing it like when I'm doing it, but it takes me a lot of effort to get myself there. So what I'm thinking is maybe what needs to happen in 2021 is see if I can outsource this part or find somebody who will who I can pay to do this for me so I can focus on what I really love to do and that is designing and um, coming up with new designs knitting being creative that's what I really want to do and if I'm always stuck at the parts that I don't like doing so much that is the math and the calculation and the technical stuff um, which I find that now that I know that I can do it, I, I would, I don't feel like I'm lost if I'm having someone else do it and then I don't know what they're doing. I, I know what they would be doing, but I just think, I'm thinking maybe it would be nice if it's not me. So, but I don't know where to find and how to find someone that works with my weird ideas. <laughs> so I don't know if that's gonna happen or how it's gonna happen, um, but that's something I'm thinking about. That might be an idea for me for 2021 so I can work on the things that bring me joy and make me happy and things I think I'm best at. Uh, and that's the thing, I can do the other things, but it's not something I think I'm particularly good at. So, um, and I am, um, yeah, I'm thinking that that might be the way I can at least with the bigger patterns, with a lot of grading and so on. Um, that might be something to look into. Um, but other than that, I really want to keep going with the, with the designing. I have many ideas, but I really have to keep, keep myself in the ears, hold my ears. 
<laughs> there it is again. I'm sure there's a saying in English that's be- that works, but um, I have to be careful to finish projects and not just work on it when it's fun, when doing the knitting and everything. And that's the fun part that I like the knitting and coming up with the idea and getting the project done. Then there's the whole grading and testing and thing that is more technical and always gets me a bit nervous. Um, uh, and then I come back to taking pictures and posting about the things I do and that I love again. So there's this bit in between that's kind of where I find the block. I Wow, if you're that interested in this, I'm sorry you have to sit through all of this, but I'm telling you it's like therapy, <laughs> letting all this stuff out. Um, I really miss seeing my friends too with all the pandemic. It's hard to, yeah, to get things, talk about things. Uh, as a last little thing, I'm just looking at my notes and I realize I forgot to say something at the beginning. And as a last little thing, I want to, um, uh, to send a little Christmas, Christmas shout out to two people or nah. I got a little Christmas card from a viewer who sent me a little bit of chocolate and some tea and a card and that was just absolutely sorry i'm hiccuping Uh, it was absolutely wonderful getting that before christmas things were a little bit busy that's why you haven't heard from me but it was just so nice so thank you very much i have also um i have a little uh, message or a little uh how do you say greeting for um let me check she's called francis uh who had her 30th birthday on November 29th and <laughs> it was actually oh well, now I don't remember why did I write I didn't write this part down oh I got a message on Ravelry asking if I could do a little birthday shout out and I of course I can and I just got that after I recorded my last episode so now I'm giving it in this episode so even if it's a little late happy birthday uh, on your birthday on the 29th of December uh, and as a last thing, I just wanted to talk a bit about, uh, I have two little recommendations that I think are good for knitters and people who love wool. And the first one is something, why did I put it, ah, here. Uh, and it probably is most interesting if you're Danish because I don't think you can get it outside Denmark. Um, it's a hand cream that I find works really well on my overly washed hands during uh, corona and also it uh, sinks in really quickly and so i find it really nice for knitting and no it's not sponsored or anything i just um it's a recommendation actually from my sister so it has no perfume um and it's made in denmark and it's from fobo pharma so just a little recommendation and it's really fun and pink yeah and also i wanted to recommend what i'm wearing um by the way if i get any questions about it this is a dress from uh, olive clothing that is um, a sustainable brand uh, from the uk i think and it's a very nice little dress although it did break a big bit in the neck and i have to mend it um so sorry about that and it's all wrinkly but what i wanted to recommend and i'm going to show a little bit of my (laughs) Uh, these um, leggings that I got, um, and I'm wearing some old socks, uh, these leggings that are from Dilling, uh, which is a Danish um, a Danish knitwear, not knitwear, but yeah, they make knitwear, like uh, underwear and s- s- leggings and sweaters and stuff, um, brand, and I thought they're really nice. Uh, they are also organic merino, I think, if I remember. Let me just check the label. They are organic for sure, but if it's merino... Mm, yeah, organic merino wool, and they're made... No, no, knitted in Denmark, dyed in Poland, and... Sewn? Sewed? It says sewed. Sewed. It sounds weird. Sewed in um, Lithuania. So they're kind of local. Not completely local, but at least they haven't been to the other side of the earth and back. Um, and they're really nice to wear on the dresses and very comfy so yes i think that is it for my episode so there was some knitting and a lot of uh, chatter i hope that was interesting enough to watch um and i can't wait to show you some more designs i can't wait to get on the other side of my block and like a knitting designing 
it's not that writing down patterns block I have at the moment. Also, if for, for any by any chance you have um, you know of anyone who's really good with the grading and stuff like that, maybe let me know. Send me a message. I would love to hear because I'm gonna be looking for somebody and see if that's maybe a way I can get past this issue. <laughs> so. Uh, I hope that you had a wonderful Christmas and you're going to be safe on New Year's Eve in a few days. I hope I can get this up. I will have to go edit this in the evening and as you can see it's getting really dark. And um, you can see my little tree behind. It's nothing special but my parents had a big Christmas tree so I didn't, we didn't want to get a big tree. And this, is one, this one is actually in a pot so we will plant it afterwards. Um, it was still nice to have something small, although I, we have needles all over. Do you, call, do you call them needles? Like the these little guys all over the yeah the floor. So we should, should probably get it out soon before it gets too uh, yeah it, it dies from the heat and stuff. So I hope you will all um, stay safe and take care until we speak the next time. Bye.